All right. Uh, thanks, everybody, for making it out this week. Uh, today, we have our own Professor Lin Wan Lu, who will be talking about Ritchie curvature and Ritchie flow on weighted graphs. Go ahead and take us away. Okay, so thanks to joining us the seminar. Uh, today, we'll talk about the Ritchie curvature and Ritchie flow on weighted graph. Uh, this is a joint work with a bunch of co-authors, and I'll explain to you, and based on two papers, the work was done by two uh, visits uh, at the Harvard University in the 2000, uh, 2019. The first paper uh, is during the May of 2019, when I attend uh, the first conference of STGR. Uh, and uh, the second one is another visit in the summer uh, to the Harvard University. Now, everybody knows the, the STGR, so I don't have any to explain him. Uh, uh, Surya and uh, Zhu Yue are uh, my former PhD student at Zhu Yue here. Uh, Surya was the postdoc at Harvard University at that time. Now she is a tenure chef assistant professor at the University of Southeast. And Zhu Yue now is a postdoc at the Georgia Tech. Uh, An Huang uh, is an assistant professor at Brandeis University in the Boston area. So it's very close to the, uh, the Harvard University. Uh, uh, Yongli is a professor at the Tsinghua University. He is my, one of my long collaborators, and he is also visiting Harvard University uh, in August of 2019. So this is how the work will be done. All right, uh, so let me give some background why we consider the, the choose the ratio graph. Uh, so let's start with uh, well, the big uh, topic. So, everyone then this is really most significant data uh, in the last two decades. So, the Parama in 2002, 2003 announced uh, his proof of the Pankhali conjecture. The Pankhali conjecture is stated that every simple connect across three manifold the homotopy to three spheres. Now, there's at least uh, three groups of people uh, contribute. Uh, Make the few details of his proofs and include the planar loft uh, and the char and Zhu and the Mogi and Tian. Uh, it's quite a big controversy about his proof and you know who can get the credit and so on. But I'm not a geometer, so I'm a commentarist. So we can we don't need to talk about that. Uh, so the whole proof is how I did right are the heavy things, the rich flow ideas. So let me try to, uh, to to draw and see what we can do for the graph. So suppose that you have some manifold, okay? Let me just uh, do a drawing. Uh, okay, so I need probably need to, okay. So yeah, so suppose you have some less fan shape you know, in the manifold, okay? And the way you want, so it, it, you equip it with, uh, you know, a uh, real geometry. And you, you, you want to continuously morphism, finally you get a sphere, okay? And through the uh, uh, rich flow. So, so that's why, you know, rich flow is so powerful right now. And it's also very popular. And what we want to know is that, suppose I give you a graph, okay? Right? So, and here, what we can do, okay? And we want to say, okay, I can give, give me a graph, an arbitrary, and I try to morph them to a stand form. Now, the sphere you can think about is to have a part of, is to have the constant curvatures. So maybe we can get a graph with the constant curvature and some format, right? So this is the topic. Then why we want to uh, st study the weighted graph because I want to change distance. So if you're continuous uh, shrinking, moving, you want to allow the distance can be changed, not equal to one. Okay, so let me give you some background of the rich curvature on graph. Okay, so here is the background. Uh, let M is be a manifold, X is a point, Y is another point, and uh, V is a uh, on the on vector in the tangent bond. Okay, so okay. Uh, suppose I have two ball, uh, BX and BY, center and XY with epsilon radius. And I want to move the mass from the ball BX to BY. Uh, and what is the average distance between the, the ball BX and BY? That can be computed. Oh, so maybe probably I just 
Sure. Okay, so that will be better on the high DSC. Uh, so it is approximately dxy, uh, the center distance between x and y, but with additional some terms, uh, the risk curvature and the dimension appears. And this is uh, indicated that can be used, this idea can be used to define the risk curvature on graph. So there are some many variations of the you know, curvatures. Uh, oh, sorry. So as I in the okay. All right. So I want to talk about the, the, the cultures based on L1 distance. Okay. So early in 1985, Becquery and Emery found a way to define so-called low reach culture bond. And uh, that works on uh, all the magic space. Now, Fan Chow and Yao, uh, as Yao, they define a class of graph called the rich culture spread based on frame. And they said, from that, you can have very good uh, lob stability equality. Uh, Sturm and a lot of the Vlanius, uh, they prove the components of the uh, curvature dimension bond. Uh, and uh, Oliver's gave, uh, uh, Oliver curvatures are uh, in the Markov chains, uh, such as graphs. And uh, in 2011, and uh, Lee, uh, Lee and I and we are, we kind of adapted the Oliver's ideas and to give a definition of cultural graph. But our uh, definition is slightly different from Oliver's. I will explain later. So let's give notations, okay? Uh, so the weight graph we consider in this talk are slightly different from all, you know, the weight graph. We actually have two weights. So given the underlying a simple graph, and then you have two widths. One is called the distance function, the other one called the width function. And what do they do? One is called a D, one is called W's. Okay, so let me just uh, try to draw. Uh, so suppose I had two vertex, okay, X and Y. The way we think about, it, we have two, one is called the WXY, okay? And Y is the TXY, okay? TXY, you can think about, DXY is the distance between X to Y, and that indicates, uh, you know, if you want to send information from X to Y, how long to take, right? And the WXY is kind of capacity of the information you send X to Y. So that way, you, if you have information you want to send out to the neighborhood, uh, if you have a large capacity, and then you'll receive more information. So that defines the random work. So the random work, uh, the Chinese probability, okay, from U to V is given just uses the weight, W. But the distance is uh, uses the D, okay? Now, uh, if we go back uh, to the simple graph, so the simple graph, you just said all oh, the distance U, V, and W, U, V equals one. And so that's uh, all the definition that I come back to simple graph. Okay, so with this notations, uh, let's talk about public distribution. A public distribution is uh, simply just uh, uh, a function from vertex to zero one, and such that the summation is equal to one. And if we have, you, you can think about there's some mass distributed on you know on the vertex set. You you have one distribution to other distribution, one to change in some mass move from one situation to another situation and what is the distance? The coupling is tells you the way you can move from one with others. So the coupling of field definition is, is, a, uh, is a function from A from V cross V to zero one, such that if you sum one index, you get the first distribution, you sum up another index, you get the second uh, probability distribution. So the transportation distance is simply just uh, the distance, uh, the optimal distance, uh, and it's the coverings, all possible coverings. Now, here the cost move a mass from x to y is the distance x and y. So if you take it all inframe and that gives you just play distance. Now, it is a really a distance of uh, public distribution, so satisfy the triangle is required. Uh, this is the solution of the optimal problem. So any linear optimal problem have a dual problem. So you can define another way uh, using the, the dual problem. So dual problem uh, is uh, defined as uh, the Lipschitz functions. So what's the Lipschitz function? It's a vertex of, uh, 
a functional vertex uh, to R such that the difference between the x and the fx and fy is at the most times constant times dx and y. Now, usually we put the c equal to y, we put it for the or meter stage, so the ellipses. So, uh, the transparent distance also can express as a supreme among the fx times myx minus my2x. Uh, you take a supreme among all one ellipse functions. So, two. Uh, definition uh, is quite useful to be able one could give you the low bound, other one could up bound. If both of them achieve the same values, and that this value must be optimal. So it's very useful to compute uh, the transparent distance this way. So now let's give you a definition of uh, uh, rich curvatures of RAM. So we first will define so called alpha rich curvature. Alpha is idleness that tells you you do random work, you do related random work. So you start from X, you move the move to the of the neighborhood, right? So you, you probably the alpha, you, you just stay at, at the vertex. You probably the one minus alpha, you move to the of the vertex with the probability uh, proportional to the width of that edge, WXV. So here WXV uh, appears. Uh, and then uh, when alpha equals zero, this is the usual random work. And that curvature is related to R versus or inversion curvature. So we kind of express the idleness and then we can define so called alpha rich curvature, the alpha. And finally, we take the limit. So this here is some probability. Okay, just give you an example. Uh, here is the graph with the C4, and uh, the Y distribution is uh, you have one alpha center at the X, and uh, uh, yeah, so you have alpha set to the x, and then you have uh, one minus alpha and here in this one neighborhood. And then you want to move to this notation, okay? This is distribution. And what is the optimal way you can do is just, you move, you know, the one minus alpha or two units from u to v, and move, you know, the alpha minus one minus alpha unit to from x to y. And then the calculation tells you that the half alpha, the, is given by this piecewise piece linear function. And it's always like this. All right. So, oh, I apologize. I did not have to do that. Uh, all right. So now, uh, because the any Lipschitz function, uh, you can extend from subspace space to the whole space. And the transparent distance only depends on the distance among the vertex in support of M1 and support of M2. So in other words, it's a local property. So rich culture is really, really local. Uh, and it's a concave function in alpha that can be done and it's, it's bounded. And so then we can really uh, take the divided by one alpha to the limit. This limit always exists. So this is called, uh, uh, now people call it the Lin Lu Ya uh, rich culture. And now it's one popular curvature on graph. And here's some examples. If uh, the curvature on the triangle, you get a two, and if the C4, you get a one, C5, you get a one half, and if the cycle is uh, A greater than or equal to six, the curvature gets zero. Somehow the curvature will depend on the triangle, uh, four cycle, and five cycles. All right, so this is a uh, uh, little bit of curvature. So now those curvature can be easier to uh, return to uh, the width graph. Uh, just uh, very recently, not five away ago, so in 2017, so see, uh, almost like uh, six years after our paper published, and then they gave us uh, Mucho and Richard Trotsky first gave a definition of a limit free version. So it's a very clever way that you can find two operators, one for delta, it's basically the average operator operation. Uh, and then otherwise neighbor x, y is just the gradient vector, you know, the, the directional derivatives sometimes. And it turns out uh, it can be defined this way. So you are taking the if name among all the neighbor x, y, act on this delta, uh, delta y, f, and you among all the one Lipschitz functions such that delta x, y, f equal one. Now this condition is 
is same as uh, the distance uh, fx minus fy minus fx equal to distance x minus y. So yeah. Uh, the original version is really just uh, for a simple graph, but we can easily extend to the weighted graph. Now, every uh, linear optimal problem, you have to have dual problem. So that's why we ask that, you know, what, what, what is the dual uh, format of this uh, formula? And in 2019, and we figure out, so we introduced so called for the stock hybrid. Stack coupling is like coupling, but it's a matrix. Okay, so uh, basically, let, let me just uh, draw uh, and tell us what that is. It's a matrix, uh, so your index have x, uh, and then it's neighborhood. Okay, let's say x one, x two, and so on. Okay, and they have y, and then y one, y two, and so on. Okay, and between x y, this actually is positive. Okay, all others are negative. Okay, somewhere. And if you sum up the, the row sum, one, one is negative of the, 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 prop, the property situation, the other one is uh, uh, you sum up the column, you get uh, the column sum is, except the first one, and you, you, is, uh, is uh, another property situation. And summation of all edges together should be equal to zero. So this kind of very special uh, coupling function, we call the star coupling. Uh, I would like this is the analog of like the combinatorial Laplace versus the adjacent matrix kind of relationship. Okay, so you have you know one positive entry or diagonal, but here is only one entry, and all other entries are negative. And then we prove that indeed uh, the Lin Lu Yao curvature can have right as uh, uh, a supreme of the bxy times the cos bxy, and then you divided by the distance between u and v. So, so this format, you have no limit. And as it's due to the, you know, the, the previous uh, formulas. Uh, so it's very useful because one give you, this one give you uh, the low bound. If you find a star coupling, you immediately get the low bound of the curvature. The other one give you the up bound. So if the up bound and low bound, the peak is equal, and then you, you calculate this curvature. All right, so, so now back to the first part, the problem. So uh, total curvature, what's the total curvature? Total curvature is simply the sum of the curvature of all edges. Uh, Pablo, I have a and, question. Uh, sure. A quick question. So in the previous two slides, you have this uh, yeah. info soup, I mean, one more. If uh, and soup, yeah. Uh, previous slides. Okay. This, this one, this one looks like a continuous, you know. Yeah, yeah. So I think so. Well, uh, yes. So uh, that's why you know there's some connection. Uh, it's, it's nice. It's a data geometry background, mm -hmm. like average distance and average operator, and also this uh, gradient vector. You know, those are really geometric terms. Operators. So, so, so you are saying if if it is continuous level, I will compute this operator at this inf. I will end up at the curvature tensor. I, I think so. Yeah. Uh, the Richie tensor. Okay, something interesting. Okay. And I, I, I probably the second one also have like the, the continuous version. You know, it mm -hmm. looks more complicated, but some says you know this. If one exists, the other one should be also exist. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now let's talk about the problem of total curvature. So total curvature is the sum of all the curvature on edges. Uh, let's forget about the tree like. Let's just think about this problem. So this problem when I was attending. The US 70th birthday uh, conference at Harvard University, and I meet uh, An Hua. An Hua told me the problem because his uh, physics collaborator told him that they can show by do the experiment if they choose the weight to be the function of uh, what. So if they choose the weight, is like uh, uh, let me just write here. So if the you, if you choose the weight of if you pick the weight, okay, W equals to like a function of one of this square, okay, something like this. And then, then they find uh, the, the total curvature is uh, minimized at a simple graph. So this, they, they cannot, so they say, oh, they try it. 
experimentally, uh, this works and this asks why. So this is how the problem comes from. So now I'll give a solution. Let, let me explain what is a tree-like uh, means. The tree-like is this way. So I had uh, vertex X and Y, and X and a neighborhood, okay. I uh, let's call it the K. And Y had neighborhood equal L, right? Now, it basically said the distance is the distance of the path. Uh, if the super graph, this condition really said the girls is at least six. Oh, actually you can show the girls should be, of this graph should be at least six, if the tree like. So locally it's like a tree, uh, but the curse itself is the not uh, guarantee. So you have, this, is, this, this condition is slightly stronger, but it was simple graph is equivalent to the first year at least six. So we use that formula, we have a term, you know, the, in the previous slide, we have the, you know, the euphonym and the euphonym supreme, and we can use to calculate a tree-like uh, graph. So we actually get this uh, very nice uh, uh, curvature bond. So remember that if we have the lower bond, uh, we can use the formula of uh, our stack coupling. So use our stack coupling formula, we, we calculate a lower bond of the curvature. And we summarize it here, this is this formula. It's a very nice formula. I know it's a, it's a two v greater than uh, H W and H W is the width function. Okay, so it's a very neat function. And now we can study, you know, when this uh, functions achieve a maximum, achieve a minimum, and that should give us the result. So I will show you the next slide. Okay, so the next slide will here is our main result. Uh, so what there are two results. So Let's the G is this weight graph. You have two weight, distance weight, and you know weight for the uh, random work. Uh, if your weight and distance have some relation, if it given by any function f, f is a non-increasing function. As long as non-increasing function, then the total distance at the curvature is at least two v times v minus two times e, and you call the holes if and only if e is tree like and all this uh, weight function f is just one number. So because the scaling that done that the curvature, so that tells you essentially it's a simple graph. And that answers the question, you know, uh, asked by uh, Huang. Uh, so, and then we realize we also get if, if what if the f is a, a, a decreasing function. Uh, now it depends the function. And then you can turn the e equal to run. But this time we need an, uh, a condition, a second condition. If, if we, it's a tree like, then we can turn uh, the e equal to run. Now, as run f is a equal function, and then the curvature was at most two times the number of vertices minus the number, number of edges. And e equal to hold, if only, only if, once again, is, is just a simple graph. You know, or, or, all the weight uh, as same on the graph, but distance could not be same. So this is the more general because uh, obviously this is a simple graph, but now the, the, as long as it gave the, each edge equal weight when, when you do the random work uh, and that give the total curvature reaching the minimum. So this kind of I'm surprised with that to us. All right, so this is the part of one. Uh, I probably need a good time to ask a question. Do you, do you have any question so far? Okay, so let's move on. We'll talk about part two. The second part is about the rich uh, flow. So I have a, quite, a quick question. Okay. Sure. For this kind of uh, total curvature, or this, do you compare this with the, uh, you know, compare the curvature with the entropy? So, I mean, the entropy. Uh, no, we, we, we didn't think about the time. We had the original problem, you know, we have this problem is really motivated by uh, Hua Fang you know, so his uh, physicist friends. And they did the experiment, they found this, uh, and they thought oh, because maybe the function in the one over the square is very mm -hmm. special. This mm -hmm. is the very special function for the physicist. Mm -hmm. So they asked the question and we, we gave a solution and give a very general solution, you know. When that you call the holes, what condition is sufficient to, to say mm -hmm. the, the uh, photo culture is maximized or minimized? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, very good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. Okay. Mm. okay, yeah, sure. So let's move on. The shift tab is about the rich flow, okay? So a rich flow manifold is just by the simple equations. So here GIJ is the real man uh, metric and RIJ is the rich culture. So you solve this uh, differential equation, uh, the pi of the respect times T of the GIJ equal negative two times uh, the rich culture. And then, so the, 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 that will change, you know, the rich culture uh, or the remain manifold uh, and uh, uh, remain match uh, the remain manifold. And slowly, you know, when it stop, it will become a, a constant culture and it became a sphere. Of course, the difficult part is you don't want to say, oh, you have to have singularity, you know, you, you block into two spheres instead of one sphere, but this is a very hard part. That's why, you know, those who work is so, so important, also significant. Uh, in 2019, a group, uh, actually there are two papers, and the one paper is by Ni, Ling, Lu, and Ko. They wrote a paper trying to generate the rich flow to the graph, and they consider this uh, iterate uh, discrete time and update, you know, the weight and the distance. And uh, also they assume, you know, the, the, the weight and the distance is written by some fixed functions. And they have some very some special functions. They try all different functions, and then you say, oh, and some functions works well to you can detect the uh, communities. So this is kind of interesting. And the paper is, is, is almost all the experiment result instead of one minor, you know, symmetric result. So that even didn't say why this, you know, the, the rich flow should be exist. Uh, but just that it looks works well. Uh, so we saw their papers, and we want to. Give some mathematical theoretical result. You know what we can prove, whether the flow exists, and if it exists, what the limit of it looks like. And this kind of things. So here is a uh, approach. We will consider so-called normalized rich flow or weight graph. So the first part is very similar. The second one is try to really just a normalization. So when this limit, uh, you know. But there's two difficulties, you know, uh, we have to be take care of. One is that uh, at some point, because the distance are changing, right, the weight are changing, and at some point, maybe the eight is no longer the short distance between the U and the V. So suppose I have eight UV, and because this 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 distance will be increasing, increasing, and no longer the so this eight is no longer needed. In that time, we'll remove this eight, so the time to not, and then we consider a subgraph. And it will continue this uh, the system. That another difficulty is with some distance became too short. They are close enough and then pick zero. You cannot have a natural uh, distance. So at that time, we will just uh, control that edges. So U and V became one point. So we'll keep doing this and, and we'll, we'll, we'll hear the result. If we keep doing this and then this system have uh, solutions. The solution always exists for all the time from zero to infinity. So eventually we have some kind of a uh, rich flow. Uh, but uh, we don't know about this, whether the limit is equal to infinity, the limit exists. If it exists, if it converges, and it will converge the cost of curvature with the graph minor of G. Why is the graph minor not the graph itself? Because in the, in the process, you might delete some edges, you might capture some edges. At the end, you get a graph minor. And that graph minor eventually will be have a constant curvature. Uh, this is uh, not hard to see. Uh, so if I give you, uh, if it's convergence, okay, what happened is, so as t goes to infinity, okay? Okay, t goes to infinity. And this will become zero, right? If it converges, right? And you get it here. So here you can solve that the curvature k e of t equals to, you cancel this one, it's just summation of the, the, the other things, okay? And here is a k of h of infinity, okay, it's infinity, and then dh infinity. So suppose the limit exists, okay? So you can see it's a constant. That's why uh, once, once the limit exists, you give it a constant uh, curvature object. Okay, so this is kind of nice. Uh, okay, there's some, you know, exist. And we also use that uh, if the limit converges, what, 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 what it looks like. All right. 
Aha. So this is after eight pages. I just want to give you the idea so I can write something. Uh, so I think the online, you know, the web, it really changed the way we present, we present the oh, Sorry. Okay, so I need to give it, okay, so, uh, okay. So I want to give the ideas, okay, uh, why? So the way you can think about, I have collected of, you know, so weight and the function, they are written by some functions, okay? So let's consider the way I have collection of this, uh, uh, all this, you know, the, okay, so here you are, so this power, okay? So this is, give you, this just the, the collection of all this uh, key ideas, e of this, okay? Your and the way you can think about, so something called the run. Suppose I have a cycle, okay? In your graph, okay? This is cycle C, and this is my U and V, okay? And this D of V might be longer. Sometimes, you know, so let's say this here is the U1, U2, U3, U, U, let's say your A, okay? So there's there something like sometimes the time t, you know, d u v is uh, the same thing as d u u one plus d u u two plus d u l v, right? So that times, you know, this 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 edges the distance is so long that is no longer needed, right? So. That's, that's a better situation. Another better situation is those D of equal to zero. And those collection, so think about this the whole space, the work partitioned by into field, you know, okay. Just uh, some regions, the connected regions. Now you have a rich curvature, okay? So the rich curvature is a flow, it's the curve um, in this, this space, okay? So they go somewhere, okay, they grow here. They hit one of the boundaries, okay, either this or this, okay. And then they will look at some space and they will approach on uh, uh, this one. And then you do it here. So somehow, uh, this is not a good joint. I will say, okay, so suppose I have, you know, the, the high dimension, okay. So maybe this is a three dimensional parameter space, okay. And then you, you have a rich curvature you move on some of this, you know, on the boundary. Okay, this is this kind of boundary, uh, high plane. And then you study uh, do another rich flow inside this flow, and you keep doing. Maybe the, at the end you get hit another boundary, and then you go to the low dimension. You keep doing. So in that way, I can find a piecewise, uh, you know, piecewise uh, uh, differential uh, test. You know. And that's the solution we're talking about. This is the rich flow culture, uh, uh, rich flow we are, we are talking about. Okay, so does that help you to understand what the, the rich flow we're talking about? Any questions? So this is just in this sense, uh, you know, the system has a solution. And that's why uh, you also have underlying graph also change. Could lose some edges, could combine some vertex, contrast some edges, so you get a graph minor. Any questions? Okay. I have a quick question. Very, sure. very I'm sorry, there's so many questions. Yeah, this is a very interesting question. Very nice. So so I know it's like eventually you, you gain this constant curvature in, in this sense. So have yes, you started the yeah. 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 Have you started the dynamical behavior, you know? Mm, yeah, like this. that's the that's the next slide we're talking about. Okay. So that's all kind of all kind of things will happen. Where okay. is this could happen? Okay. Okay. So okay. that's the next one. Let's look at a very special example. It's just a P3. So uh, just a pass of three vertex, and you call X, Z, and Y. And AX, AY, you know, it's just give you the, the from Z, you know, would be probably X equals to X, you probably AY equal to Y, okay? And X has no choice. Any mass, you could X should go to Z, Y should go to Z, right? So and so this rich flow equation is very simplified here by this line here. And we can actually study the behavior, depend on what kind of function we choose. So the width depends on the distance. Suppose it's identical uh, functions. So gamma of x equal to x. 
So that means my weight, WXY equal, uh, WXZ equal to uh, DXZ. So is that what? It actually, it converge. So this is the first thing that it's really converge. Uh, let me just write something out. So this is why you, you, the, the limit object is like this. Just a simple graph of P3. So the, each of weight, yes, you can see this, the, the, the D, which is one half and one half. And uh, the curvature is one. So it's just a standard, you know, uh, P3. This is the one scenario. And then the second scenario is more complicated. Uh, if we, we choose the square, okay? And then it's eventually claps. The, the three point eventually uh, x, z, y, right? So the first year goes to x, z, y and z will, will just merge. And then you get the one point. So the whole graph just claps to one, one vertex. Now the most interesting part is the, the K3. So K3, we can find this very special function. It's not, it's not, not trivial trying to find this function, okay? And we define the gamma function like this, the piecewise function. And with the initial value, we will give the W, the weight is three eighths and five eighths. And then the result is surprising is a periodic solutions. So basically, I tell you what it is, okay? So here is the graph, X, Z, and Y. And here is the distance, okay, DX, Z, DYZ. Now this is the function, you can see by the x, y is, is, is fixed. And this y is just uh, oscillating. The z is moving from left to right, right to left. And this function is, uh, I can write as this, the function looks like this. So I will draw this uh, graph. Uh, so here, this, this, this is a line. This is, uh, uh, I think this should be, uh, let's see, a quarter. And then you add one in. So, 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 so it's a sine function, and then the, uh, the top is uh, three quarters. Okay. So, this is three quarter. The curve is like this. So, this is one half. Okay. So, now I have a sine function like this. Right. I have not another fu sine function like this. Okay. So that function, dx, y, okay, is something like this. So it's one part of a sine function, then followed by another sine function, and then go down. So this is what it looks like, okay? And similarly, the curvature is also oscillating. Yeah, the period, the period is, is, is too high. So that means so it's never converges. It just oscillated to each other. So I guess I just this is dynamic, you know. I think the uh, which one is, uh, is asking. Uh, you could have some kind of oscillating function. You don't have a limit object. Okay, so uh, maybe we should move on. Okay, so now we can have this uh, discrete, you know, algorithm. Uh, you know, we can. Uh, so let's just kind of describe as we, we have a distance condition. This condition makes it, okay, at some point, you know, the UV distance is too large, larger than other short distance along the, an, another path. And the, the merge composition is that oh, the distance is too small, that's close to zero, and you have some actions. And the terminal condition is that, oh, the, you know, the, the converges, the curvature, each ratio is less than some error term. So you will think about the stable. Okay, so now here is the average. So we'll calculate this AI. This, this is sum of all the weight. And then with the application, uh, according to this formula. Uh, so, and, and then we'll, we'll check all three conditions until those one condition is uh, satisfied. If we, the distance uh, function is varied, then it means the, the DL UV is too large. And then it will reach that edge, and then it will continue. If uh, the, the distance is too close to zero, we will merge the UN and V and it will, will still continue. If the curvature is stable and it will stop, it will output the graph. 
So that's no good. It's every stop because, like the, the example we show you, might be oscillating. They're not going to any limits. Uh, but if 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 it does, they'll give something. Okay, they will give with the uh, the uh, breath minor, and which is a uh, have the constant curvature. All right. So the high structure is very really interesting. You know, this idea can repeat. Let me just draw something, and I'll help you understanding what I'm talking about. So what I have a graph, okay? It's a huge graph G, right? And now, after I doing the rich flow, okay, algorithm, I end up with a very nice uh, here is a graph minor, and it's called R, okay? Look, this is a graph minor. So each each graph minor, each point. And it really corresponds to the radius, right? Okay, so this is uh, if you go back again, this okay. Uh, so now for this picture, so this is a V, uh, this is the back V, and this is a V of V. Okay? It's a pre image, and the pre image itself is a graph, right? So This is an induced graph. And now we can iteratively we can apply this rich flow algorithm. to we have inverse of it. And we can do we can apply here, we can apply here, right? And we'll continue. And then we'll get, get another graph minor, right? So, and then this actually each one you will get to about the community. And this kind of get the high structure. So, the right way, this is to deal with the algorithm that we can decouple this as a graph to some standard drawing. So, I will use the Google map as an example. The first you see the whole world, is the graph is so huge, you get the, the world map, right? And the South Carolina is kind of like a one dot, you know, it's, it's not a very big reading, it's a very small reading, just so it's not in the United States. And then you can zoom in. You can, uh, in South Carolina, if you look at it clearly, then you can see the cities, like you, you get the Caribbean. And Caribbean is one point. And then you zoom in, you'll see the University of South Carolina in all kinds of streets. So same thing here. That gives you the natural way to present your information of the, the huge graph. You know, this algorithm I can, I, each time I present you is a, a graph which have the constant curvature, suppose they have very nice appear, appearing, it's nice drawing. And then you can zoom in for each dot and you get another subgraph and then you get another map, another layers. So this is given a high, high uh, I could call left structure. I think it's very useful. Okay, I, I hope I can explain this idea well. Uh, any questions? Okay, so uh, okay. do yeah. you have any computational figures for us to Yeah, see I think so. Uh, the ideas, yeah. Surya actually included some of the pictures in, in the paper. Okay. So that's available on outcome and you can read it. Okay. Uh, he, he didn't, uh, you know, for this idea to work, you have to a huge graph in the very large. Mm -hmm. She only practice a very small graph and the result not really very good, but. The, the way you want to really want to see like your high rate sorting of vertices, you know. And then, you know, you can, you can study see all kind of different layers. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. But but this is give some, uh, it's, it's, it's kind of like the idea about the rich flow in the geometry, right? You give any manifold, you can kind of like morph them into a standard version. Here, mm -hmm. I give any graph, I give the morph them a standard version, give, give like, a, you know, the rich, constant rich culture. Graph, which graph, mm -hmm. and of course the difference is that instead of only graph, you keep the topology here topology change, but you keep the graph minor. So you, you or the one you got is a uh, graph minor for only graph. Mm -hmm. All right, so let me just give some open problem. Uh, I think I'm down uh, the top. So we actually suspect that the chaos could exist if you have freedom to choose you know, the, the function. 
So if I carefully design the function, I can I should get uh, some care behavior. Like you know, one initial value you change uh, a distant weight a little bit, and the result you ending up is a very different or never converges. You know, uh, we actually try some try to embed a chaos system, the nice system into this. Uh, but we didn't succeed, so we don't know. Uh, even the example I show you, you know, the oscillating example, the function is not not trivial, you know, it's really in subsequent times. But we we think this chaos behavior should be exist. Now, if your gamma function is very nice, like identity function, or let's say one over, uh, you know, some part, you know, the d to some power or one over squares, for example. Or just a constant functions, and maybe in that time maybe we can prove the risk culture always converges. We don't know, but we hope we can uh, get some result. So, so this just start, you know, this paper is just uh, starting, give mathematical foundation. So we about the root flow and graphs. Uh, so, so a lot of questions remains. We can have them. I am sure some of the questions should be very deep, and we, you know, uh, we don't know how to answer them. Uh, yeah, but uh, anyway, I think uh, I, this is all I want to say today. And thank you. Uh, if we have any questions, this is time for us questions. Thanks, Lincoln. Uh, if we could all thank Lincoln in some way, and we'll go ahead and open it up uh, for questions now. So do we have any questions for, for Lincoln? Yeah, because I kind of see the body, so maybe I will exit and then, then they will move back to the uh, Zoom so I can see, at least see you guys. Any questions? Yeah, so the paper is available at archive, you know, if you are interested in these topics, you can just read the paper. Okay, and it also you can ask my course, for example, like TV is like here. <laughs> okay, well, it seems like there's no additional questions. So thanks again, Lincoln, and uh, have a good weekend, everybody. Okay, bye-bye. Bye-bye.